Good morning, New Heart Christian Center. This is a blessing to be before you once again on this Sunday, this third Sunday morning. God has been good to us, been merciful, and we are forever grateful of his love, his kindness, and his tender mercy. Amen. We're going to come before you again this morning with another beautiful Sunday school lesson. I do have some awesome teachers and leaders in the word of God uh, this morning that can break the bread of life. And we're just excited to be able to get into the conversation this morning. And we encourage you this morning to join the conversation with us. Go ahead and type in that comment bar and just enjoy the Lord together with us this morning. Amen. We are going to be continuing our our, uh, uh, our lesson talking about Moses, talking about the commandments, and today we're moving on to God confirms the covenant. God confirms his covenant. God puts his stamp on the covenant that he made with his people, which is very encouraging. We're going to be coming from Exodus chapter 24, the first 11 verses, 1 through 11, Exodus chapter 24, 1 through 11, for Christ, Hebrews 9 and 24 is our golden text, for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. That is Hebrews 9 and 24. Amen. We're going to turn it over at this time to uh, Minister Ramos. She will lead us in prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for waking us up and we thank you always for the yes, opportunity Father. to be in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your promises and your covenant that you have kept with us. You're such a faithful God. Yes, and Lord. we ask yes, that the word that goes out today, Father God, will pierce the hearts, Father God, that we will receive from you now, today, and forevermore, Father, we will be in your word, and we will be willing and obedient, yes, Father God, and we will follow you, follow after you, and seek righteousness in the name of Jesus. Have your way today, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, and we Lord. thank you, Lord, that thank no you, corrupt Father. communication will proceed forth out of our mouths. In Jesus' name, Yes, Lord. get your glory in this Sunday school. In Hallelujah. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we're talking about God confirms his covenant. One thing I know about God is that he's a faithful God Amen. and he always confirm his word. And if anybody ever give you a word and there's no confirmation, they are lie. God always confirm his word. And here we see that God makes a covenant with his people, but he needs to reassure them. He confirms that covenant. So what we want to uh, talk about our aim, our facts today is to see that people must be reminded of God's promises and their responsibilities. So not only does God uh, confirm his promise, but we also have a responsibility to that promise. Amen. Um, I've said it um, a few weeks ago, maybe on the other week, that God's blessings upon our life are contingent upon our obedience. God still holds us responsible for our part in his promise. You Amen. have a part in God's promise. He holds you responsible. He holds you accountable for that part. Um, our principle to understand that when God gives promises, he expects a personal response. So here we can't say my mama was saved, my daddy was saved, my granddaddy was saved. Here God wants you to give a personal response. It's about a personal thing here. It's about a personal relationship here. Um, application to be alert to God's will for us as believers saved through grace Amen. to be alert to God's will to be aware of God's will for us as believers saved through grace so when God says something in scripture pay attention amen when he says it again twice really pay attention in this lesson, God is confirming the covenant he made with Israel. The first time the law was given, they responded quickly and maybe without fully understanding that they would obey it all. Now they are going to hear the law again. Amen. Amen. I want to look at this golden text just right quick. I think it speaks volumes. Um, Hebrews 9 and 24, it says, For Christ is not entered into the holy places, made with hands. 
I believe this speaks volumes because the place that Christ entered didn't no man build. Amen. You know, we have made the space shuttle. We we have come up with all kind of, we've made skyscrapers. We have done, we make all of these bridges. We have done all of these wonderful things. But the place that Christ enters into was not made by hands. Amen. Which are the figures of the truth. That means that uh, back in those times, they made figures that represented uh, spiritual things, that represented uh, God. But into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. So basically meaning that Christ hath become our high priest. That's a part of the covenant. That's a part of the promise that he is our high priest. What does that mean? That Christ is that mediator. He, he goes to God for us. He presents us to God as faultless. That's why the scripture says in Romans chapter 8, Now, therefore, there is no more condemnation to them that are in who? Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Jesus because the scripture says that he has now appeared in the presence of God for us. You know, when you look at the lesson from last week, who was the only person allowed to go in the presence of God? It was Moses. And we talked about Moses being that figure, that, that figure almost of, of Christ, that Christ-like figure, the one who had to go up to the mountain mm -hmm. to go in the presence of God and seek instruction for the people. So God confirms his covenant. We're going to uh, look at the first verse this morning. And Exodus 24 and 1 says, and he said unto Moses, God talks to Moses and he says, come up unto the Lord. Now, I want to stop right there. It says, come up. God basically is telling him that it's time for you to come up, not down. God is not down, but Amen. he says, come up. You know, if we was to really apply that to even us right now that lets us know that we've got to level up we've got to raise our thinking we we've, we've got to raise our mentality we've got to come up to where god is Amen. what does colossians 3 and 1 says colossians says set your affections on what the things, things above. above amen things above amen so this you know you can look at that and you can put that here with moses he says and he said unto moses come up I, I, I want to talk to you unto the Lord. Not only come up, but come unto the Lord. Thou and Aaron, Nadab and um, Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. So they were to worship from a distance. Mm -hmm. Amen. But Moses was to come up. So let's just, I'm going to turn the conversation over. At this time, Moses' responsibility was to come up. Everybody else, Minister Ramos, had to worship from a distance. Amen. This has some very, very, very uh, large practical meaning to this, if we want to be practical about it. Basically, basically, because they were not to a place with God where they could be directly in his presence. Right. They were to worship afar off and sometimes sometimes we have a lot of people that do not feel as in a place with God does do not feel as comfortable uh to be able to worship him freely they worship from a distance and so minister Ramos I want you just um from this verse I want you just to elaborate some more well, I know even if we pertain this to the church, um, the modern church, we have the pastor who comes up into the uh, pulpit. And, yes. of course, us as the saints, we're in the sanctuary. And then those that don't feel comfortable mm -hmm. with being in the church, they'll sit farther in the back. Um, but we are to understand that even the ones that went with Moses unto the mountain, they were yeah. called to worship. That's right. While Moses was speaking to God, they weren't just like when um, Jesus went into the wilderness to pray and he told them, can you guys not pray with me for one hour? Well, these 72 people still had an assignment to worship while Moses is speaking to God. You still have an assignment even in the distance. That's right. 
and that is to worship him. So I, that's, that's very important to me. And you made a, a very good point about come up unto the Lord. Yes, ma'am. So come where I am. And then Moses continues to get closer to, and draw closer to God. But while Moses is going, it's your assignment to continue worshiping. That's right. Awesome. Awesome uh, elaboration. You know, we talk about come up. As in our spiritual lives, mm -hmm. God wants us to come up. God wants to raise us up because the enemy, you know, he, he works to keep us down. He works to destroy us. He works to bring us down. And this is why you hear God speak to Moses and say, come up. It's time to come up. You know, you heard the bishop preach about last Sunday when he was talking about the next chapter, Elder Solomon. Amen. Talk about that next chapter. Because why? It's time to come up. It's time for us to, to do better. It's time for us to be better. Amen. It's time for us to what? Have better, to have more. And everything, it is time to come up. And um, Elder Solomon, I want you to elaborate if you have some things you want to say on that verse. Amen. Now, he tells Moses to bring them with him. But uh, we have to understand, uh, as it has been stated, that everybody does not enter into the same place in when it comes to God. And sometimes yes, in sir. the presence of God. And I, I will tell you that, you know, to whom much is given, the Bible says much is required. And so now Moses has been given access to God, but how much more did God require of him in what he did? Moses had to be the most uh, perfect and upright of all because he was the one that commune directly with God. And and we have to understand that uh, there are times where God will commune directly with our leaders. That's right. And we are not privy to what God says to our leaders. And, right. and our leaders will come back and, and, and share with us what God has said. But, you know, many of us uh, sometimes, and I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but they're, they're, sometimes people get offended because they feel like they don't get to know as much but there's some things that only God wants to share with leaders and then leaders are uh, there to disseminate the information and because many times some of the information that God gives the leader we can't handle Amen. so right. we Amen. The, the leader will give us what we can handle and you take what the leader gives you and you work it with all your might all right elder solomon you said a mouthful there you said some things that god <laughs> give the leader you can't handle if he Amen. gave it to you that was one of the primary reasons later on that the children of israel after they heard the thunderings and they heard the roarings coming from the <laughs> lord they told Moses, you speak with the Lord right. rather than us. Amen. You know, lest we die because they were so afraid of what was happening, all of these things happening when God began to speak to them. So they said, okay, Moses, you, you're right. You're the leader. You talk to God for us, and you just give us the instruction. Yeah. Because everything that God tells the leader, uh, we can't handle the way he gave it to the leader. Amen. But the, he gave it to the leader for us. But we can't handle it if it was if he was just to talk directly to, to us about some things. So this is this lesson lets us know that God have appointed people in place. Amen. God have appointed leaders for our life. You know, uh, we live such in an age now, and this Sunday school lesson speak volumes that uh, there's a lot of folks that don't want to be led. Amen. Uh, they don't want to be pastored. They don't want to be taught. You know, how can they hear unless they have a preacher? And how can he preach unless what? He be, be sent. sent. Amen. But we are in a world, uh, in an age now mm. that people, are, they're so high and mighty that they feel that they don't need a pastor. Come on. Amen. They don't need a church. They don't need a pastor. They can do it on their own. But this lesson reminds us that God still uses leaders to lead his people. Amen. He still speak to leaders for the blessings of his people. Sometimes, most of the time, uh, our life is connected to some leader. Our, our blessings, Minister Ramos, right. is connected to some 
leader. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if it's anybody watching and you don't have a leader, I encourage you this morning to, to find a leader that's teaching you the word of God. Amen. It may be here at New Heart Christian Center, but find somewhere that can pastor you, that can help you, and that can teach you in the ways of the Lord. Amen. 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 And so we look at verse 2, and it says, And Moses, we heard a lot about Moses. And Moses alone, as Minister Ramos was talking about earlier, Moses alone shall come near the Lord. Wow. Moses, he was the only one that was able to come near the Lord. He was the only one that was to a place that he could come near the presence okay. of God. Amen. You know, I hear some people say, Lord, just keep me near the cross. Yeah, but Moses was the only one out of Aaron who later became a priest. Right. The father of the priesthood. Out of everybody that was around them, the only person that can come in the presence of God was Moses. Why? Because Moses was the one that God ordained for that position. Amen. And so Moses alone, don't bring nobody else. Every now and then, we, you know, we, we live in a time too. We, we always want to bring folks with us. We bring folks with us. We always want to bring them on board. You know, sometimes they don't mean us no good. They, 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 they don't know help to us, but we want to bring them on board. Mm -hmm. So Moses alone near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh. They shall not come near. Neither shall the people go up with him. I can only imagine if the people had got hard-headed Minister Ramos and Elder Solomon to try to go up there with Moses, I can only imagine they might not have made it back down. That's true. The way they came. Amen. You know what else that tells me? Mm -hmm. We got to know our place. Mm. We got to know our place. It ain't for everybody to be a preacher. And it ain't for everybody to be evangelists. You just got to know your place. Amen. It wasn't for Aaron to be in Moses' place. It wasn't for his sons to be in Moses' place. You know, when you look at um, Aaron's sons, the priests, you know, Leviticus chapter 10 later on talks about uh, the death of Aaron's sons because of their disobedience to God. You know, so we have to be careful of the people or what position we try to put ourselves in. You know, his sons, Aaron's sons, was part of the priesthood. They was born into the priesthood, but they disobeyed God. And because they disobeyed God, God judged them for it. And so I'm going to move to the next verse and then turn the conversation back. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord. Amen. Uh, we've seen this last week. We've seen it where Moses, he goes up to the mountain he gets instruction, and what does he do after he gets instruction? He comes and he tells the words and the commandments mm -hmm. of the Lord. And all the judgments, not just the words, but the judgments as well. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord hath said, we will do. And I'll turn it to you now, Minister Ramos, because we've seen this last week. Uh -huh. This is the second time, maybe one of the third times, that Moses, he gives them the word of the Lord. And they make a commitment. And that's a big word there. They said, all the words that we hear and the Lord has spoken, we will do. They come with the yielded spirit and they make a commitment that they will do these things. Minister Ramos. Amen. This um, brings about a complete turnaround from the previous weeks where we talked about the words that were coming out of their mouth. It, yes, ma'am. It used to be murmuring and complaining and uh, Moses being the mediator, when they complain, saying, Lord, give us a drink, Moses go to God and say exactly what the people are saying. Lord, they want something to drink. But now that the opposite direction has happened, Moses is now taking the word of the Lord to the people and giving them exactly the message that God gave them to the people. And now we see that they are now humbled and saying, whatever the Lord said, we will do. So yes, that's a different area of obedience where they have been... Um, uh, 
designed to be right. at this point now because they've gone through their tribulation. They've gone through their test. They've gone yes, to ma'am. the point to where they've been through the desert. They've been through the wilderness. Now they've come to a place of, like we were talking about last week, a place of rest. Yes, yes, yes. Ma'am. And so that's where we see their submission and their obedience come into play. And I, I like what they're saying. Honestly, I, I would love to make that my own mantra. All the words which the Lord had said, mm-hmm. we, we will, will do. do. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. You know, uh, and that goes back to James to be ye not only hearers, mm-hmm. but what? Doers, Doers of the word. It, Amen. It's, it's not just good enough to hear. Right. No, it's not. You, you can hear all day. You can listen all day. But until you become an actual doer of the word, until you put it into life application, there's a lot of people that hear the word but they don't live the word. They don't do the word. But God want us to be obedient to the word that he speaks to us through the word of God. Amen. So we see a very committed and a submissive heart from the people after they've experienced God at the highest. They've seen uh, Pharaoh's army drop. They've witnessed God manifest miracles for them. The only thing they can do now is just submit to God, Amen. is to yield themselves to God. And that is the type of attitude that we should have. You know, the Lord has done too much for us. He has been too good to us. He has brought us from too much. He has brought us too far, not for us to have a what? Yielded spirit towards him. A yielded heart, a committed heart to be faithful to the word of the law, which we call now the word of God. Because what? He's also faithful to us. So verse 4 says, And Moses wrote all the words of the law, or words of the Lord, and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill, and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel, Elder Solomon. So he wrote all the words. He documents what the Lord spoke to him. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, that let us know that there was some type of writing in those early days. Mm -hmm. Um, Moses documents and rose up early in the morning and built an altar. One thing I like about uh, Moses, Elder Solomon, after he gets a word from the Lord, he goes and he builds an altar. Amen. He builds an altar, first of all, for worship. And that is what the word should do for us. It should... (laughs) Uh, invoke worship. some worship in us. Amen. You know, uh, I don't know about you, but whenever I hear a good word, Amen. Whenever I just read something good, it always invokes worship. Amen. That's it. Good. Always invokes Lord. I just love you, Lord. I just thank you. I, I I adore you because your word is so powerful. Your word is so good. And so we see Moses doing this. He builds an altar. That altar, first of all, is for worship. And now, not only for worship, but then he, he builds, he gets uh, 12 pillars, and he sets them up to represent the 12 the tribes of Israel. of Israel. So worship, then he sets up a memorial. He sets up a memorial. That's what those 12 pillars are that represents the 12 tribes to remember what God had done, to remember when God spoke to him. And I have a question for you, Sunday School Land. Uh, this morning, do you remember when God first spoke to you? Amen. You know, what were you doing? What kind of memorial do you have set up in your heart when the Lord first spoke to you? So, Elder Solomon, I want you to take a little bit on this scripture. And now we see, uh, as he said, he builds an altar to worship God, but also uh, as a remembrance. And, and many times, uh, a lot of the things that we endure in our lives today if we just go back to the altars that we built uh, and the things that God has done in the past, uh, what we're looking at right now wouldn't amount to anything because it, I look at what God has done for me just like going through a picture album. And, and, and if you've taken pictures and put them in an album, and, and if you sometimes you realize you go back and you begin to look, even if it was 20 years ago, and a picture will take you back to the, the, that time and you'll begin to remember all the things that 
happened at that time, even if it was 20 years ago. And so if a picture can do that, then how could the altars that we have in our mind do that for us? Oh, I, I, I'm in a situation right now where I can't see my way out of it, but I remember way back when, 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 when God did it before. And so Moses builds these altars, uh, and it's for us to realize that every time that God does something monumental for us, we need to have a way to remember what God did. And if we remember what God did before, we won't be worried about what's going on right now. Amen. 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 I believe we talked about it in the convocation. Huh? We got to remember what God did before. Amen. So we don't forget <laughs> what he can do now. That's amen. right. We don't forget what he's done for others. He can also do for you. Amen. Uh, and so as we move on, verse 5 says that he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrifice, peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. So, Minister Ramos, these young men served as basically the priesthood that has not been established yet because it's the priesthood who does what? They offer burnt offerings. Amen. They, they offer uh, offering worship to the Lord. So they offer up a sacrifice, um, and they sacrifice not only an offering but also a peace offering. Mm hmm unto the Lord, which represented them being at peace with God. Amen. After these commandments, after saying that we, all the things you spoke, we will do. Uh -huh. Now they are at peace with God. You know, there's no greater feeling than when you know that you are obeying the Lord of feeling at peace with him. Amen. There's no greater feeling than that. And um, verse 6 says, And Moses took half of the blood, and put it in uh, basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. So uh, the blood that he put in the basins was for the people to sprinkle it on them. And Minister Raymond, I'm going to let you kind of talk a little bit about that and all the, what all of those things represent. And half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Amen. Amen. That, that represents their submission to Christ that represents their yielding themselves to the Lord. So, Minister Ramos, if you want to talk about verse 5, verse 6, go ahead and elaborate. Amen. This also reminds me of the time that Abraham um, went up the mountain with his son Isaac. Um, if I'm not mistaken, um, but God asked him to give a sacrifice, That's and right. he went up the mountain with Isaac um, and it wasn't really about whether Moses, I'm sorry, Abraham would do it. It was about Isaac being obedient mm -hmm. and following after his father up that mountain, not knowing where he was going, not knowing what he was doing, but he was obedient and obedient. followed up the yeah. mountain to be sacrificed unto the Lord. And just like these young men in their obedience to give unto the Lord, they sacrificed burnt offerings and they gave peace offerings as a part of, like you said, sealing the covenant with blood, just like the life of Jesus Christ did for us. He sealed the covenant with his blood, his own blood he shed for us. And then they anointed themselves with the blood, sprinkled the blood um, on their foreheads. And that, that is a testament to us. Now we do it with the anointing oil. That's we right, don't have to right. do it with blood Amen. anymore, but yeah, it's yeah. still the same it's just still still as sim symbolic as them doing it with the blood because right. Jesus gave his blood for our sacrifice. So it's important to understand that this sealed the covenant. God had already sealed the covenant with them. Now this was their responsibility, mm -hmm. as you talked about earlier, and they have now sealed the covenant with blood. You know, I, I like that you put it that way because that, that goes back to the consistency of God. Even back then, he, was, he already had a plan in mm -hmm. place for the redemption of his people. Amen. And we saw this happening through the blood sacrifices that started uh, with Israel. But God was using this to be a future figure and representation of the blood that Christ would have to shed for us. Amen. That sacrificial lamb that he would have to be for us. You know, I've said before that there, there would have to be blood shed for a life to be saved. You know, a, a life given, uh, a life saved. So, um, or a life taken, a life saved. Amen. But there would have to be blood 
shed. Christ was that blood shed for us. That's why all of this that you hear about the sacrifice, you hear about the, the burnt offerings, uh, that, that's not just for just uh, literary works and writing. That is to let us know uh, how early, how God planned to redeem his people. Amen. He used all of those things to take us all the way to Christ. As the scripture said in Galatians, that the law was a tutor. You know, Moses' law was a tutor for us to lead us to Christ. You know, it wasn't everything, but it was just to help us get to Christ. So, uh, with that being said, so, and Moses, I'm sorry, and he took the book of the covenant, verse 7, and read in the audience of the people, and they said, again, all that the Lord have said, we will do. And be obedient. And be Amen. obedient. And so, so they, they go a little further now, Minister Remos, Elder mm-hmm. Solomon. Not only did they say, we will do it, but they say, and be obedient. Amen. Wow. You know, why, why do they add that extra? Because some things you do, you, uh, you're you yes. compliant with. Right. You're just compliant with. Amen. But you're not committed to it. Mm-hmm. And so this is what they say. Not only are we going to be compliant, but we're going to be committed to these words. Amen. Oh, that's very important. I'm going to say that again, Sunday school. Because some things we do, we're just compliant. That's all. Not that we really want to do them. Amen. But the children of Israel let us know through this word on this morning that they don't just want to be compliant. They want to be committed to this word. Elder Solomon, you have anything you want to say on that? And we have to understand that now God has uh, given them the words and, and as we've said they continually say whatever the lord says we will do it mm-hmm. but we're going to find out that you've got to do more than just say that you will do it god uh continues to present this to them and allows them to continue to uh, agree to show us how important it is to agree, but we will find out later that agreeing to do it is only half of it because the other half of it is keeping your word towards God. And so he keeps telling them what he wants and, okay, Moses, whatever the Lord says, we'll do it. But how many times have we agreed to something Mm. just to get past it? Come on. But then when it was time to do it, uh, we'll talk ourselves up into it. And I, I would this what they're doing to uh being uh willing and saying that you're gonna jump out of an airplane now you might i might tell you all the way up <laughs> I'm that i'm it. that i'm going to jump <laughs> yeah i may I'm ask you uh many times well uh what do i do when i jump out or uh, uh, uh at what point do i do this and, and you may explain it to me and i'll tell you all the way up right that I'm, I'm building up my confidence and I'm going to jump. But when the door is open and, and, and I got that split second to think about that free fall, although I've said I'm going to do it until I do it, it's not done. And so we have to be careful Sunday school to know the word of God. But if you agree to do what God says to do, please know and understand that just telling God what you're going to do while you're not faced with anything is easy. But when you're faced with something, when you've got to actually go through with it, that's when God really tests you to see really where you are. And so we're going to find later on that the children of Israel are going to continue to fail, even though they keep telling God, we're going to do what you say when it's time to do it. Or as grandma used to say, when the rubber meets the road, we're going to find out they ain't trying to go nowhere. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So we move towards the end of the lesson. It says, then went up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. All these people were Moses. And they saw, this is awesome. They saw the God of Israel. Mm. Amen. Mm. So uh, all of this time, they uh, were not allowed to go up to the mountain. But finally, these 70 elders, Aaron and his sons and Moses, the scripture says they saw the God of Israel. I'm, I'm stuck here for a moment because 
another scripture also says, no man have seen God at any time. And I'm purposely doing this because uh, we're in the Word this morning, and we, we want understanding. <coughs> if, so if the scripture says, no man have seen God at any time, Minister Ramos, uh-huh. Elder Solomon. Amen. But we read here and says, and they saw the God of Israel. Minister Raymond, I don't know. I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you want to kind of lead us in the direction of what they're saying here? Or, Amen. One uh, great thing to reference, like you said, they saw the God of Israel. Um, I love where it goes a little bit on into that verse, um, but we'll stick right here for now. In that covenant that God sealed with them was not only his promise to take care of them, but he has, like we talked about last week, he introduced himself to them. Right. He came into them, unto them in a cloud. He actually made a divine appointment with them to meet him at the mountain. Right. Amen. So God has been such a, a gracious God to them. Now he's coming a little bit further. And he's allowing them to see a part of him without them seeing death. Because that's the only thing that you can, when you come unto God in the fleshly nature, usually it's followed by death because his presence is so great that we can't live in his presence. But the covenant that he had with them, he sealed it with even showing them a greater part of him, himself to them. Yes, ma'am. So that, that is exciting to understand that sometimes the presence of God, Bishop was just talking about Sunday, that he has experienced a cloud of glory. And believe me, I've witnessed that as well. Yes. When you get into that cloud of glory, it's not something that you will readily forget. You set a memorial and an altar in your heart like we've been talking about. And so God did that again with the people where they set up a memorial. God has come back and set up an altar with them and showed himself to them. I remember one part was talking about when Moses could see the hinder parts of God. Amen. But now these, this type of uh, situation where they were able to see his feet. So that, that's such a blessing. You answered it perfectly. I said, if the scripture said, no man have seen God at any time, Mm -hmm. but we read here, and they saw the God of Israel. That'll preach by itself. Amen. What it was talking about, and the the scripture further goes on here, they saw the glory of God. They saw the glory. The glory. I, I believe it was Isaiah said, in the year of King Uzziah, when he died, he saw the glory of the Lord, the Lord high and lifted up between. He saw all of these, you know, angels, but he saw the glory of the Lord. What they saw, they had a first experience of the glory of God. Amen. They saw the glory, and look how beautiful it was, it says. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone. Mm. And if you go in the book of Revelation somewhere, in the, la- the latter chapters, it begins to talk about the description. is very consistent. Amen. About uh, him being made up, uh, looking as sapphire stone. And as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. So this goes to talk about what they saw. Not so much the face of God, because you can't see his face, right. but they saw the glory of God. Thank you, they were Lord. in a place because they had yielded themselves. This is what we're trying to say, because they had committed themselves to the Lord. They had agreed to obey his word. He then manifested his glory in their life. That's all God want to do with us. He, he, he still wants to show us his glory. He still wants to manifest his glory to us and in our life, in our church, in our services. He, he is still manifesting his glory, but the Lord want a yielded heart and a committed life unto him. And so the end of this lesson, and even upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink. And so when the glory of the Lord is in a place, when the glory of the Lord is somewhere, everybody gets to experience Amen. that glory. Amen. And so that is part of God's covenant. That is part of him confirming his covenant. How does he confirm his covenant? He allows them to experience his, his glory. glory. Thank you, that Jesus. That is how he confirms 
his covenant. I don't know about you this morning, but, you know, that ought to be our prayer. Our prayer is, Lord, show me your glory. Lord, Lord me help me glory. to experience your glory Amen. again. Lord, confirming me that you're still with me. Confirming me, Lord, that you're still here. Confirming me that you're still in my life. Lord, just let me feel your glory one more time. Let Amen. me feel it again. This is how he confirms his covenant with them to remind them that he'll never leave them nor forsake them, but he is always with them. I want to thank you for watching this morning. We're so excited about service this morning. We want you to tune back in with us at 10 a.m. For those of you that will not uh, be coming to the outside service, tune in with us at 10 a.m. And allow God to have his way. Don't forget to share Share, share, Amen. and share. May God bless you. May God keep you. And certainly may heaven smile upon you. Amen. Be blessed.